Hey, it's Twinbee. I know that guy. We saw him a few episodes ago when we covered Parodius Deluxe Pack, which was a PlayStation launch title in Japan. If you remember, the Parodius games borrow characters and gameplay mechanics from a bunch of Konami shooters, including Twinbee. And also like the Parodius series, Twinbee games have a history of skipping a US release. Twinbee here is an anthropomorphic spaceship who first hit arcades in 1985. The original arcade Twinbee is a vertically scrolling shooter where players face off against both airborne and ground-based enemies. Twinbee can take out ground targets by dropping bombs on them, a la Namco Xevious. He can also power up his attacks by collecting colored bells that pop out of clouds after you shoot them. In addition to standing out from the crowd with its pastel backdrops and cute characters, Twinbee was among the first arcade shoot-'em-ups to offer two-player simultaneous gameplay, arriving in 1985 alongside Capcom's Ext Xs, which also had co-op. After a successful run in arcades, the Twinbee series then saw several console-exclusive releases, including a sequel that was released for the Nintendo Entertainment System in North America as Stinger. After that, later Twinbee releases alternated between the arcades and the Super Famicom, and one of the most popular sequels from this era wasn't actually a shoot-'em-up. 1994's Poppin' Twinbee Rainbow Bell Adventures for the Super Famicom and European SNES was a side-scrolling platformer. It featured recontextualized elements from the previous Twinbee games, and it even has a two-player mode. Apparently emboldened by its success with Rainbow Bell Adventures, Konami then took the next logical step, a puzzle game. So here we are with Twinbee Tyson Puzzle Dama. Like Parodius before it, Twinbee Tyson Puzzle Dama mashes together elements from multiple Konami franchises, in this case Twinbee and Tyson Puzzle Dama. Now, Twinbee's fairly well known as far as Konami franchises go, but Tyson Puzzle Dama is a little bit more obscure, especially outside of Japan. Tyson Puzzle Dama originally hit arcades in Japan in 1994, where it competed with contemporaries like Taito's Puzzle Bobble and Sega's Puyo Puyo 2. Design-wise, Puzzle Dama takes a lot of inspiration from the Puyo Puyo games. Tyson Puzzle Dama is a block-dropping puzzler where you have to link up three or more shapes of the same color to make them disappear. Like in Puyo Puyo, your matches can align vertically or horizontally, but not diagonally. And with some careful stacking, you can chain together combos that attack your opponent with garbage blocks. Puyo Puyo had a similar garbage dropping mechanic, but Puzzle Dama's twist is that you can convert the garbage into usable puzzle pieces by making adjacent matches. Each character also has different patterns of garbage blocks that they drop, making character selection a key factor. Overall, the changes Konami made to the Puyo Puyo formula result in a faster game where it's much easier to make combos, either intentionally or unintentionally. Having to link up three blobs instead of four to make a match certainly helps on that front, but the real game changer lies in the fact that you can reclaim garbage blocks and factor them into your combos. This makes Puzzle Dama have a back-and-forth feel that looks forward to later competitive puzzlers like Capcom's Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, as well as shameless knockoffs like Puzzle Arena Toshinden, which uses characters and music from Takara's Battle Arena Toshinden series, but otherwise sticks very closely to the gameplay mechanics introduced in Puzzle Dama. The original Tyson Puzzle Dama didn't get much distribution outside of Japanese arcades, but Konami did produce a limited English-language release under the title Crazy Cross. This is pretty much a direct localization of the original Puzzle Dama game, and though the series saw more than a dozen Japanese sequels and spin-offs in the years afterward, Puzzle Dama never got another stateside release until the iPhone era. That's when Konami resurrected the formula to serve as the basis for its iOS puzzler Castlevania Puzzle Encore of the Night. See, even all those years later, Konami was still mashing its franchises together to see what works. So that's a lot of talk about Puzzle Dama, but what does Twinbee add to the game? Well, not much, as it turns out. Twinbee Tyson is essentially a reskinned Tyson Puzzle Dama that swaps out the original cast with Twinbee characters and replaces the Puzzle Dama blobs with multicolored bells. That's pretty much it. In addition to arcade and versus modes, there's also a story mode that features a ton of voice dialogue that fleshes out the personalities of your favorite Twinbee characters. Now, you wouldn't think that the stars of an arcade shoot 'em up series would have much to say, but Twinbee was in the middle of a multimedia renaissance of sorts in 1994 leading Konami to produce multiple anime films, manga adaptations, and a massively popular radio drama that aired 96 episodes between 1993 and 1997. So yeah, odds are that there's at least a few people out there who appreciate the story bits. Okay, okay, you see, Twinbee is a quote-unquote bumblebee android created by Dr. Cinnamon on the Donbury Islands, where he lives with his sister, Winbee, and also his youngest brother, Gwynbee, who the Twinbee Wikia describes as the most marginalized team member for some reason, which is really unfair if you ask me. Hey, where are you going?
Anyway, if the Twin B aesthetic doesn't do much for you, Twin B Tyson Puzzle Dama also includes a port of the original Arcade Tyson Puzzle Dama, though it's hidden in the options menu. Here's a pro tip, just select this option here to load it up. This seems to be a pretty accurate and fully featured port, making it kind of strange that Twin B Tyson Puzzle Dama isn't presented as a compilation, like Parodius Deluxe Pack was. I didn't even know the original game was on the disc until I started messing around with the options. Definitely check it out if you're looking for a break from Twin B Tyson's roster, or if you feel more comfortable playing as a penguin. If you're looking for another excuse to add this game to your collection, in addition to being the home console debut of the Puzzle Dama series, Twin B Tyson Puzzle Dama includes a manual that's filled with full-page illustrations from artist Shujiro Hamakawa, who produced several pieces for the Twin B series over the years. It's a nice bonus, and it helps to round out the package as something worth tracking down for Twin B fans and collectors alike. And if you're still not sold on the idea of a Twin B puzzler, don't worry, we'll be covering Twin B Deluxe Pack in a future episode of PlayStation Year Zero. Next time on PlayStation Year Zero, we're covering From Software's very first game, the original Kingsfield. This one's actually a different game than the Kingsfield that was later released in the States, so I'm really curious to see what it's like. PlayStation Year Zero is a Patreon-supported series. Back us with a monthly pledge, and you'll get early access to all of our upcoming videos, along with the chance to vote on our weekly streams. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.